Buongiorno, welcome to step two or lesson two in the art of partimento. A partimento, if you missed our first class, is a pedagogic method developed in the 17th, 18th century in Naples, in Italy, uh, at conservatories. Conservatories at that time were orphanages for young boys. And in their part of their training was to teach them the art of music, music composition, and musical improvisation. Just imagine if you could actually improvise a fugue on guitar. Well, they would have expected such skills to be a part of their training. But they began with the voice. And last lesson, we focused on how we could take thirds, move them in parallel. And on the guitar, this is done with two shapes. And sixth with two shapes. So if you miss that lesson, you may go back to that one and catch up with us. Okay. Today we're going to see how these intervals can be kind of combined and how they might be uh, treated in a more contrapuntal way. Me and the other voice. So do me fa la. So what you just heard is kind of formulaic, but it would be something that if you saw a voice moving up by step and having a harmonic uh, statement that went from E, from me to Fa to So, that your response in improvising could be to sing So Do La Re Ti So if we apply this pattern on the guitar, you'll notice certain shapes. This is the third. This is our fourth. And we'll end with the third. Taking this a little a step further, we can fill that interval of a fourth in by creating a scale. That sounds a little bit like when you go to the basketball game or baseball game and they start doing la da da da. In this case, it's so la ti do. So how that would work? Again, same bass line. improvisation or our practiced formula could be So essentially what we have is what we call a first inversion chord. We have a bass note, and above that is a third. And then the next note that it skips a fourth is what we would call an A minor chord in this case. C and E. Normally we would have seen it here, A, C, E. But if we bring this up an octave, we have C, E, C, E, A, Do, Mi, La, yes. And if we take this shape and we look at it all the way through, we've got a third and then we have a six. having to do with knowing your fretboard uh, is also having to do with which ones are major thirds and which ones are minor thirds. So a major third is here, 
and a minor third looks like that. So when you saw this, there's a minor third, and that would mean the shape here will be a little bit different. Yeah. So if I have major third, it's going to go straight across. But if I have minor third, in this particular case, I even get a tritone right there. And now minor third, but yes, and minor th major third, major third, and you get the idea. So you can practice this again with your scales. Yes, you have a scale. On our previous class on partimento, we discovered that the rule of the octave was taking a six and, and making it an octave by moving the two outer voices in contrary motion. So parallel motion is when our voices are moving together in the same direction. But if we move them opposite directions, if F goes up to G, and A goes down to G, we have an octave. Even better. And they love that sound. Yes, in the Renaissance and in the Baroque period, that'd be the 17th and 18th century, and all the way through even today, we find songs that will do that, follow that same principle. So even though this method of discipline for improvisation dates all the way back to the 17th century, it's still very current and, and can be put into use today as well. So today we got to see how you can embellish, how you can combine intervals like a third and a sixth in relationship to a bass note and create what we call an inversion of a major or minor triad. So we call that a 6-3 relationship. In your practice of scales, you can add this. You can start with maybe thirds. Yes, and you can harmonize it in tenths. And then end in an octave, the rule of the octave, yes? And you now could even make it a little bit more interesting by adding sixth in that. So you'd start with an octave, go to a sixth, and then go up the scale in six. And here you can make an octave if you want. Or you could have kept on going. They're going to go in contrary motion. Yes? Have some fun with this. This is a great exercise for your thinking brain. And it also will help make you more prepared to spontaneously create music. That's the end of today's lesson. Next time, we're going to take a look at a composition by Matteo Carcassi, which essentially does many of the things we talked about in the last two classes on Partimento.